Ajnanam timirandasya Gyananjana salakaya Chaksurun militam yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama First I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Dikshu Gurudev Srila Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj and Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj to all of our Guru Varga, all the assembled devotees and beautiful guests. Welcome to Vedic Tales Instructive Pastimes. Here we are at the printer. So you see lots of pictures around. We're printing an art book of all the paintings that I did for Srila Prabhupada and for Srila Narayan Goswami Maharaj, henceforth called Gurudev in this video. So I'd like to begin by talking about this bird in Radha's hand. His name is Sukha or Vichakshana. And there's something very special about this bird because today I'm going to answer the questions beginning with why did Krishna leave Vrindavan? Why did Krishna leave Radharani and never return from Dwarka? One video after another we'll be discussing what happened to all the residents of Vrindavan when Krishna never came back. So let's start with the narrator of these pastimes in Srimad Bhagavatam. That's where all the answers are. Bhagavatam has all the answers to all these questions because it's the source of all these pastimes. Fan? So, this is a very special parrot called Sukha or Vichakshana. And Radharani loves this parrot so much. She would sit the parrot on her, the palm of her hand, feeding him pomegranates, and sweet rice, that is uh, rice cooked in milk with sugar and beautiful long basmati rice. And she would teach the parrot, chant Krishna, Krishna. So the parrot chanted in the same sweet voice that Radharani has. So because the nature of parrots, can you kindly close the door so we don't get the outside noise? Because the nature of parrots is that they're very restless the parrot flew off Radharani's hand and went to Nandagaon, where Krishna lives, in his garden. And Krishna saw and he heard, Krishna, Krishna, in such a sweet voice. Where is Radha? Is Radha here? But then he saw, no, it's a parrot. So he took the parrot and he also began caressing the parrot like Radha does and feeding him pomegranates. And then all of a sudden, the parrot started lamenting. Oh, fie on me. What is the use of my life? I was given so much love and affection and nourishment by Srimati Radhika. And I just left her hand and came here. And then all of a sudden, Lalita and Vishaka, Radharani's two most intimate girlfriends came and said, Krishna, please return that parrot. That parrot belongs to Radharani, and she's feeling great separation. So Krishna said, okay, if the parrot will freely go, otherwise whoever takes shelter of me, I never let them go. So if the parrot will come to you, fine. Otherwise, there's nothing I can do. So then, Lalita and Vishaka went off to complain to Mother Yasoda, who immediately came and took that parrot, gave him to Lalita and Vishaka, and said, you're always playing with animals and birds. You're just like an animal playing with them like that. So then she grabbed Krishna's hand and walked him. And your father's waiting for you to have dinner? Come, have dinner. So she took Krishna away. So when Radha and Krishna were leaving the world, the material world, to go back to their abode, they told that parrot, Sukha, you'll have to stay and preach our glories. 
because if you don't, the world will be bereft of our glories now that we're leaving and going to our abode. So Sukhut said, no, I can't live without you. He said, don't worry. They said, don't worry. At the end of this life, you'll return to us. So they left, and Sukhut was wondering, where can I hear their glories? Where can I hear? So then he went to Kailash, and Lord Shiva was reciting the Bhagavatam to Parvati. And in the beginning, she was very attentive, but getting into the creation pastimes, she started falling asleep. But Sukha, imitating the voice of Parvati, very good, very good. Go on, continue. What next? And finally, the tenth canto came, and she woke up and she said, I missed everything. He said, you didn't miss everything, because you said, go on, go on. And so she said, no, I didn't hear anything. Well, then who heard? Somebody was saying it in your voice. Looking, looking, Lord Shiva found this bird, and he took his trident, and he said, I have to kill this bird, because no one who's unqualified is allowed to hear the Bhagavatam. So the bird could easily fly and flew off to the, uh, to the ashram of Vyasadeva, who's the literary incarnation of Krishna, who compiled all the Vedic literature. And his wife, he was reciting Srimad Bhagavatam to his wife, and she was so amazed. Wow, she had her mouth wide open. And so Sukha flew into her mouth and into her womb. And then he stayed there for the 12 years that he was reciting, Vyaste was reciting. So then, in the meantime, Lord Shiva came with his trident. Did you see a bird coming here? Yes, I did. Why are you looking for the bird? I have to kill him because he's unqualified. Well, what happens to a person who hears Srimad Bhagavatam? Well, he becomes immortal. Well, if he becomes immortal, how can you kill him? So Lord Shiva just started laughing. Well, hey, that's right. And of course, Lord Shiva never wanted to kill him. It's just a pastime to uh, show why the Sukha parrot went into the womb of the wife of Yasteva. So then he kept hearing for 12 years. And after the 12 years, he, uh, Vyastev said to him, okay, bird, my dear son, it's time to come out. You've been there for 12 years. Don't give your mother any pain. So then in the womb, Sukha said, I'm not gonna come out because there's too much Maya out there. If I'm convinced, that I'm not going to fall into Maya, then I'll come out. So Vyastev said, yes, I bless you. Maya will not touch you. I don't believe you. You're my father and a householder. Only if Krishna comes himself and assures me that I won't be touched by Maya, then I'll come out. So Vyastev called for Krishna. Krishna immediately appeared and assured him, you won't be touched by Maya. So then the bird came out as a 12-year-old youth, so beautiful, no clothes, just a very beautiful bluish body. And he immediately left home. So Vyastev ran after him, my son, my son. And only the trees echoed in response to the aggrieved father. Who is son? Who is father? Everyone belongs to Krishna. Everyone is eternal. So then Sukadeva went off. Now he became Sukadeva Goswami, a beautiful teenage youth. And he went to the place where Parikit Maharaj was waiting to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam because he had just heard that he only had seven days left to live. So then Sukadeva came into the arena. Everyone stood up. Narada stood up. All the, 88, all the thousands of uh, sages stood up and 
Sukadeva took his seat and began reciting Srimad Bhagavatam and told all these beautiful pastimes of Krishna's incarnations and finally Krishna himself in Vrindavan. So this is going to be one of the um, one of the images in the art book that we're making at this very printing place. So thank you very much and Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha. Okay.